Hi there! To work on the next project I need to use a breadboard to do some prototyping. But while I was about to start assembling the circuit, I realized that I had to use a dual voltage to power up the circuit. Now I have a nice cable that allows me to power up a breadboard but with a single power supply, and you probably saw it several times in previous videos. However, every time I have to use a dual power supply, I always dislike the idea to use an extra cable just for the ground, and moreover, I don't like the way I have to make the connections to power up the circuit on the breadboard, with the two main voltages on one pair of rails, usually the top one of the breadboard, and the ground only on the other pair, usually the bottom. So I decided to make a little module to better distribute the dual power to the breadboard and make it easier to connect it to the power supply. Since I found this little module very useful and easy to build, I decided to show you how to make it and how to use it. Enjoy the view! To build this little device we just need a small perf board, some wire and a little piece of pin header from which to cut four pieces with two pins each. The idea is to bring the power supply to the perf board and use the pin headers to plug the perf board in the power rails of the breadboard so it is powered through the perf board. So two of these mini headers will be used for powering up the breadboard, the other two will be used just for mechanical support of the perf board on the breadboard to avoid possible bending of the pins. In order to attach the headers in the right spots of the perf board, I connect first the headers to the breadboard in the appropriate places. One on the top rail and one on the bottom rail. The one on the top rail will provide the positive voltage and the ground. The one on the bottom rail will provide the negative voltage and another ground reference. The other two headers are located in such a way that will hold in place the perf board without making it move. You see how in a moment. Now I put the perf board on the breadboard making sure the pins of the headers fit through the holes of the perf board. You see now the perf board can stand on top of the pin headers on its own. And now it it is time to solder those pins, so they will be mechanically and electrically connected to the perf board. I am just using a little bit of solder to connect the dots. You can see how I can now detach the perf board from the breadboard and the headers are now soldered in the right position of it. And you see how easy it is now to put this card back on the perf board. So if I power up the headers appropriately, I can just attach the perf board to the breadboard and the power will be transferred to the breadboard itself. Much easier than putting pins on the breadboard and then use alligator clips to bring the power to them. It is safer and there is less clutter on the workbench. I'm now going to label the pins on the breadboard so that I won't make mistakes while wiring them. The pin on the top is connected to the positive rail, so that will need to be connected to the positive of the power supply. The pin on the bottom, connected to the negative rail, will be connected to the negative of the power supply. The other two pins, those in the middle, will carry the ground from the power supply, so the top rail will have positive and ground, and the bottom rail will have the negative and ground. Let's now prepare the cable that will carry the power to the perf board. It has to be made with three wires, positive, negative and ground. I'm using some spare wires that I hid on the side. They are actually loudspeaker wires capable of carrying enough power for a circuit on the breadboard. Here is the wire that I will be using for ground. After preparing the end of it, I'm also putting some solder to mechanically connect all the strands that make it. And here is the wire that I will be using for the positive and negative. Note how this wire is actually made of two wires attached together. The insulator for the two wires is kind of transparent, but the two wires can be differentiated easily because one of the two has a white band along it, the other one hasn't. So I will use the wire with no white band for the positive and the wire with a band for the negative. I will also solder the strands of these two wires like I did it for the ground wire. Let's now connect the wire for the positive and negative voltage to the perf board. I will connect the positive on the same side as the positive pin and the negative on the same side as the negative pin, but on the opposite end of the breadboard. Now that the main wires are connected, I need a little piece of wire to connect them to the pins. First I will use some red wire for the positive side, and this will go on one side toward the power wire and on the other side to the positive pin, so they can be electrically connected. So first I am soldering the red wire to the positive wire that will go to the power supply, and then I solder the other end of the red wire to the positive pin. The excess of wire needs obviously to be cut out to avoid unwanted short circuits. 
And now for the negative of the power supply. For this I use a piece of black wire, again one end towards the wire that carries the negative voltage from the power supply and the other end to the negative pin. And here is a little trick to help keep the black wire in place while I solder it. And now I will connect the ground wire from the power supply. This one goes to the center in between the other two wires. This cable is going to be connected to the two ground pins on the perf board. For that I am going to use a piece of yellow wire. First I am connecting the two ground pins together, cutting the wire to the correct size, um, removing the insulator, and now soldering the two ends to the ground pins. So now I just need one final piece of yellow wire to connect the two pins to the bigger wire for the ground. Again, I need to cut the wire to the right length, then I need to remove the insulation, I need to bend the ends appropriately, and then soldering, and now I have to position and solder in the other end along with the already soldered yellow wire and the ground pin. Ok, so now that the soldering work is all done and all the parts are connected properly, there is one last thing I want to do to make this thing better looking and especially to avoid cluttering on the workbench. I'm going to wrap together the three wires to make one single cable that goes from the power supply to the perf board. I'm going to use some shrinking tubing for that. Something like this should be just fine. I'm going to push the shrinking tube into the cable from the opposite side, making sure that all the cables are tied up. And then I will add a couple of more pieces of shrinking tube, one about half the way the length of the cable and the other piece close to the other end. And now with a heating gun I am going to shrink the tubes to hold in place the wires into a single thicker cable. You see, I keep straightening up the wires to make sure that they are tied together and then I shrink the tube around it. One last thing now, which is to add the banana plugs to the end of the wires, so it will be easier to connect them to the sockets of a power supply. And this of course is a relatively easy job, I just need to remove the insulation from the end of each wire, then I will wrap together the strands of each wire, I will solder the wrapped strands together, bend the wires so they will make a better grip with the screws of the banana plugs, and put the two parts together. Now, since I only have red and black banana plugs, I decided to put a piece of yellow tape around the banana plug for the ground connection. This way I will be able to distinguish it from the banana plug for the negative voltage. And now it is easy to distinguish between the ground, which is black with yellow, the negative, which is black, and the positive, which is the red banana plug. And here is the whole thing that I put together. So when I need to bring a dual power supply to a breadboard, I just need to attach this module to the breadboard like this, and then I need to insert the plugs into the appropriate sockets of a power supply, no more alligator clips snapping around on the workbench. Before declaring this project concluded, I had another change of heart. What if I forget that the yellow tape means that that wire is the ground? And so, to avoid problems, I decided to change the yellow tape with a label marked GND, which is short for ground. So at the end, here is the final product, and here is the details of the new label replacing the yellow tape. And there you have it, how to get sidetracked from a project just because I got an idea for something else that will actually turn out very useful. So now I will go back to my original project while I leave you with your own experiments. Happy experiments!